what, what was the age you started to take it more seriously? So you saw it like at seven, you had this like fascination. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what, what age were you at when you're like, okay, you know, maybe I'll treat this maybe as a career or just have, you know, I think we all have fun with that at first. And we always will. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, man, you have to, you know, you have to have fun with it, you know. Um, I want to say I, I was like 18, to be honest, where I decided that I was like, okay, I want to make this into a legitimate business. I want to conduct myself to a certain standard and um, pay taxes. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Being a, a responsible so, adult. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm like, might as well, you know, I actually... Um, shout out to my mentor. Uh, he had passed away um, late last year, and it on on Samuro, it's it's a hundred and ten percent because of him. You know, like I met him on the streets, and he picked me up. He had a magic shop, and he taught me how to present myself, how to script out a routine, how to have a stage presence, and yeah, I met him when I was like, um, yeah, when I was 19. So he actually taught me a lot of the legalities and the business aspect of, you know, being a magician and stuff. So that's good. Yeah, that's definitely good. You, know, you got to have that, you know, and magic, we talk about that a lot, like communities and the mentors. Uh, we highly mm -hmm. recommend everyone to seek out, you know, the community and find the right mentor. And, you know, in a way, we are our own mentors. But you definitely need someone that's mm -hmm. in the business to really know where to go because when you dive into it, you just don't know. So, yeah. That's yeah, for sure, man. Awesome. Yeah, because I, I didn't know. You know, like, I was just doing tricks. Like, every time I would I would get shows, I would just do tricks. I wouldn't really outline, like, a story or, like, I would just run through, like, oh, look what I can do or, okay, the next trick, you know. And um, Yeah, my mentor, he ended up, pulling me aside and we used to spend hours together where he's like, okay, the window of focus is from, you know, the nose down to the mid chest, keep it up here, be presentable, you know, speak fluently, loud, clear. Um, yeah. And it, it really, you know, I appreciated all those times because it, it formed me into the performer I am now, you know, like I can step on a stage and perform and not feel as, in, as like nervous and as, uh, you know, panicky, you know, now I'm kind of where I'm like, okay, I can do this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It takes a lot of courage. And definitely when you have someone there to, to back you up and to tell you what's up, you're like, okay, well now yeah. I have a better sense of what I'm doing rather than just going up and doing it. I, I think that goes for everybody. In the beginning, we, we're all going to be doing tricks. So we're all going to be tricksters and just having fun with it. Mm -hmm. And then once we take it a little more seriously or we run into that community or that mentor that shows us the way they're like, Oh, okay. There's more things to be known and to work and practice and get out there. And yeah, do. exactly. So that, that's definitely a great thing to have, you know, everyone that's watching this or replays this back, make sure to find a good mentor, a good uh, community. I always say your friends too and family are in a way helpful but they're not going to help you mm -hmm. really dive into like the magic aspect as far as the performance like, and also get into other arts, you know, like acting or mu musicians. And I know you work with a lot of musicians and do shows that, so it's good to see that because they're, they're up mm -hmm. there on stage too, putting on a show. It's a different mm -hmm. type of show, but it's still like a magic show, you know, it's like, it's still rehearsed and put together. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's, that's good to have. And so what was like the first yeah. magic that you remember seeing that really like, whoa, like, like got you. So you said it was McBride, but do you remember like the specific trick it was? I'm all, I'm Honestly, all interested it was the, as, as a magician, we, uh, everyone has like maybe the coin out of the ear or uh, the, yeah. you know, <laughs> the vanishing silk. Well, I mean, it was, uh, if you want to like strip it all the way, it was the boomerang card. I thought that boomerang was so card. cool. Yeah, but yeah. when I went to go, because I saw a performer doing that effect, and when I went to go inquire on that trick, I saw a DVD playing uh, Jeff McBride when he was doing the mask routine. And I remember I, I just stood in that corner watching that screen, <laughs> and it was just on a loop, just his performance. And I was just like, yeah, I was just like, man, this guy is amazing. You know, and that's when I was like, all right, you know, there's this cool magic 
tricks, you know, making things float. But then there's also a deeper version of magic where it's like, you know, where he would strip away the mask slowly and it would change colors and the sticks, you know, and I was a like, man, that's freaking fantastic, you know, like super inspiring. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, I remember when I first saw it, and I saw it a lot later, actually. Or probably in the beginning of Magic, but more like the middle of my Magic, like, career kind of thing. And I was like, whoa, this guy's on a whole nother deeper level. And I'm like, this guy's put on a lot of work. <laughs> oh, then, yeah, you, you can tell, man. 